right, so <clears throat> welcome back. I hope that lab went okay. It should have been pretty easy. It should have been a review for pretty much everybody. The only thing that would have really been new to you is maybe Flexbox. But the first lab of the day, I want to keep it easy just so you can make sure you get used to the labs, you can get to everything. It's familiar. So they won't be quite as easy from here on out. Um, we're going to go into some new territory. How many people have used responsive images? Ah, that's a nice number actually, about a third of the room. So again, for, for you, this will be new except there are familiar, except that there are some things that you may not have seen before. All right. I'm going to move over to the middle here. And click. So why are images important? Because if you look at the average bytes per content type per page, you know, we have this little thing called a Google search engine that looks at all your pages. So we can calculate, OK, what's the average you know, HTML on those pages? How big is it? You know, how big is the average image? We can figure that stuff out. So the average image weight of a site is one and a half megabytes. That's average. Now, some sites are much heavier, some are lighter. But compare that to 54K of HTML. So images take up a disproportionate amount of the page weight of the stuff on the wire. And so if you can get this image size down, that would be a good thing. Now some of the ways you get it down is by using better image compression, maybe JPEG with lower settings, or WebP, or you know, any, any of the things you can use. But another way to do it is to select the best image for your given screen size. If somebody has a small phone in their pocket, you don't need to give them a desktop sized image. You could give them the right thing. Or if they had a 1x display, a lower resolution display, you could serve them a low resolution image that matches their display and save a lot of bytes. Because remember the goal here is to make web apps that are extremely useful on mobile. And remember that you have networks that might not be that fast when you get out of the major urban centers. And you're paying, for the, paying per byte. So you're really trying to minimize your data budget. You know, we're having a discussion at the break about fonts. And we'll talk about a strategy for caching those later. So responsive images. Um, long definition, but basically what it breaks down to is helping the browser to pick the best image for your current conditions. Don't need to read you the whole big list of words. So what can we do with responsive images? So you could serve different images for different resolution screens. You could serve different images for different display sizes. Um, you could serve based on different formats or art direction. Now, there's a little demo here of rechanging images as you resize the screen. But I'll show you another Im a little demo later that's the same, the same one. So first, first rule is, well, if you don't need an image, don't use it. That's kind of obvious. If you can use SVG or an icon font, hello button, where are you? There you are. That's much smaller and it scales to any device resolution. Or using responsive images, select the lowest possible resolution and quality and pick the right format for the image type. So for a photograph, JPEG or WebP work really well. If it's a diagram, it might be WebP or Ping. JPEGs are less useful for diagrams because of the way they compress. Oh, I don't need to walk over. Sorry, habit. So responsive images introduce a new element, picture, an element from HTML5, source, which you might have seen before, and two new attributes, source set and sizes. So here's an example of a picture element. How many people have used the audio element or the video element in HTML5? OK, yeah, mostly on this side of the room. You must know, I'll know each other. Um, so the way it works is picture as well as audio and video is you put the wrapper element in picture, you list one or more sources, and the browser goes down and picks the first one that it can do. So you list them in most preferred to least preferred order. <coughs> so in this case, kittens, you know, so I could say, okay, WebP format. And if the browser doesn't know WebP format, it'll try the second line, JPEG. 
And if it doesn't know anything, it'll fall back to this image. Now, remember the rule in HTML, in HTML, not just HTML5 is, if a browser doesn't know what a tag does, render the content. So if the browser is an older browser, maybe it's an older IE, doesn't know what a picture element is, um, it'll ignore the picture tag, it'll ignore the source tags, but it'll still render this image, the thing that it knows on the inside. Now, somebody asked me last week, wait a minute, this source set and this image source are the same thing, so do I need them both? The answer is no, you actually don't. If this is your ultimate fallback, you can have it by itself, but you'll see later that we actually put this in because we're going to do some special things with this line. But in this example, I could actually just do the single source and then the fallback image, and we'd get something that works. Now, for art direction. I have an example here of injecting a media query into the source statement. So in the previous slide, we had a type, a type here on the source statement. We can have a type and a media query. <coughs> and in this case, so if it's minimum, if it's at least 650 or bigger, use the large kitten. If it's 465 or bigger, if this one fails but it's 465 or bigger, use the medium kitten. If that fails, use the small kitten. OK, so that's changing images based on screen size. But I also said you could change images based on screen resolution. And here's how you do it. In the image tag, you include a source set, which is a set of alternate variations on the image. And you say, if this is a 1x screen, load this image. 1x meaning a resolution of the older screens that have like 72 to 96 DPI. If this is a higher resolution screen, the so-called retina resolutions, anything above 300, then it's considered 2x. So 1x goes up to about 144. 2x is 300 and up, and load that image instead. The advantage being, if I have an older 1x screen, I can load an image that's much smaller in byte size. <clears throat> now, there's another interesting thing here. Um, what if I wanted to, it, one thing I can do also is instead of using the source tag, so the source tag said, if the screen is this size, you're using a media query, load this image. Well, how does the browser know how big the image is? If I'm doing a set of images, maybe the browser has to look at everything to decide what's best. So in this case, I can hint the browser in the source set tag. I could say, here's small, and this is 500 wide. Medium's 1,000, and large is 1,500. And the browser will auto-select from these sizes without needing to use a bunch of source elements and media queries. <coughs> Because how much of a pain would it be? Let's say I've got 20 images on the page and three different sizes. Do I really want to write a 60, li 60 lines of source when I can do it this way? And think about it. These could be auto-generated. You could have a build tool, look at the image on the disk, look at the width, and inject that into your code at build time. You don't have to do it by hand. <coughs> And what I can say is now to the browser, here's the size of the here's the size of the image to load. Here's the display size that I want, 50 viewport width. So I want half the viewport width. Because remember in an image tag, you can say size to say what size screen you want. So I can say size is plural. I'd say, OK, I want you at 50, 50 viewport width. And there's the alt tag. So now it'll pick the best image to fit in half of the viewport size. So on a 1,000 wide screen, it'll pick small. 1,000 wide screen or smaller. On a 2,000 wide screen, it'll get medium. And on a 3,000, it would get large. But the browser can then pick the single best fit. So all together, this time using picture and source. So picture, source, media query for this, different resolutions, media source, 
media query, also different resolutions, and a fallback to a regular bird. Lots of resources. Again, this is in the slide decks that you can get online, also in your textbook. So it's lab time again. Ah, nice, quick. So we're going to give you a blog site, non-responsive, and have you make it, give it responsive images. So you'll get to work with source set and width, use the sizes attribute, use media queries to change the image based on the size. It's called art direction. Um, and then use the picture and source elements to do the same thing for art direction. So this one should be a little different. Now I'll tell you one interesting mystery here. People last week were doing this and then they were opening the network tab and looking at what got loaded. <clears throat> and people said, hey, wait a minute. This screen that said like small, medium, and large in that order, they said the network tab says it's pulling in the big picture first. It's because they looked at it at full size and then they shrunk it down. So we grabbed the full size image for the big screen. We grabbed the small image for the small screen, but because they're both in the cache, they will both show up in the network tab, but they're not actually hitting the network. So good luck with this. This will give you a really good feel for how these work. This should be new for most of you. And we'll come back in about half an hour.